Hello! Let's go ahead and work on a problem about continuity. So in this problem, we're given a function f of x. And our goal is to find the value of c that will make f of x continuous on the entire interval from negative infinity to infinity. Now, the great part about this problem is that our function f is actually a piecewise function. And normally when you think of piecewise functions, you think of it having lots of breaks or lots of gaps. Now, the cool part about this one is, is that possibly we could fix it to where it, I could actually make those pieces line up and it is now completely continuous. So in a nutshell, what is continuity? Well, a graph is continuous if you can draw the graph and you never have to lift your pencil. So essentially, we do not want any breaks or any gaps. So we need to work on figuring out a C that makes both pieces of this piecewise function line up. To understand this problem a little bit better, let's explore both the pieces of the piecewise function. So if you extract out both the pieces, you get one at cx plus five, and the other piece is c times two times x minus five. And by themselves, each of them are essentially lines. This first one, you have a slope of c, and it goes through the y-intercept at five. So if I was forced to draw this thing out, I definitely want it to go through the y-intercept at 5, and then have some sort of slope equal to c. Now, you'll notice that I stopped at that dotted line. That's because it only acts like this for values less than 3. Now, if we look at the other piece, it's very similar. It has a slightly larger slope. In fact, its slope is exactly twice as much because it's been multiplied by 2 it goes through the y-intercept at a minus 5. So if I had to draw this one out, I definitely want it to go through, say, minus 5 on the y-axis, and then I'd draw out its slope. Now since this one is only defined for values greater than 3, I would only start drawing after the dotted line. So you can see that depending on the value of c, it could change the slopes of these lines, and both of them could actually end up meeting up at 3. So the key for this one is figuring out what slope or what c value I have to choose so that these guys line up. Now, our problem area is at 3, so I definitely want them to line up at 3. So since these things must connect at 3, I'll go ahead and set x equals to 3 and then actually force the pieces to be equal to one another. Let's go ahead and do that. So normally I have cx plus 5. I want it to equal c times 2x minus 5. So I want these things to line up at 3. Let's go ahead and put a 3 in there. All right. So it looks like we essentially have to solve the problem. 3c plus 5 is equal to 6c minus 5. Now from here, it's a straight algebra problem. Get c isolated to one side and see what it's equal to. I'll start off by subtracting a 3c from both sides. Then I'll go ahead and I'll add 5 to both sides giving me a 10 is equal to 3c. All right, this guy's almost done. Now let's divide both sides by 3. All right, so according to our work, it looks like if we choose a c value of 10 thirds, that these two lines should end up meeting up. And since they meet up, that means we'll be able to draw the entire graph of f without ever having to lift our pencil, therefore it will be continuous. Just to be on the safe side, let's go ahead and graph what we have to make sure that the two parts really do line up. So here I've made a graph, and I want to essentially graph the 10 thirds x plus 5 and 10 thirds times 2 times x minus 5. So these are essentially both the parts I've just put in that value of c. Okay, so as we go to graph the first one, it goes through the y-intercept of 5, so it definitely goes through this point. And then to find another point, I'd go up 10 to the right 3. So 5, 10 to the right, 1, 2, 3, 
It looks like it goes through this point right here. And of course it acts like this for values that are less than 3. So I don't need to draw it any less or any more than that. And there's my line. All right, now let's draw the other guy. To see what slope this is, I'm going to multiply the 2 and the 10 together. So essentially graph 20 thirds x minus 5. So as you can see, this one goes through the y-intercept at minus 5. So it would normally go down here. And then I'd go up 20. So 5, 10, 15, 20. Then to the right 3. There we go. So we end up in the same spot. So essentially, I wanted to go through these two points, but of course, this piece is only defined when x is larger than 3, so I'll just draw the right side of it. Cool. So as you can see, both halves of this function line up, and if I had to draw the entire thing, uh, I would never have to lift my pencil. So if we choose a c value of 10 thirds, we get a continuous function. If you'd like to see some more videos, please visit MySecretMathTutor.com.